Oh god! What the Hello, and welcome back to Opacold. I'm your host, KG. With me is my co-host, Forrest. Hello, I am Forrest. And uh, as of the release of this episode, uh, the first two episodes of my new podcast, The Pancake King, Life and Marriage on the Spectrum, about the autism spectrum and marriage between two people on the autism spectrum, uh, premieres July 29th. So be on the lookout for that. Go to thepancakeking.substack.com to receive updates on that show. And with that shameless plug out of the way, let's continue with Star Wars The Last Command by Timothy Zahn with Chapter 9. Admiral Drayson leaned back in his seat and shook his head. I'm sorry, Calrissian, General Valiablis. He said for probably the tenth time since the session had begun. We just can't risk it. Lando took a deep breath, trying to scrape together a few last shards of patience. This was his sweat and work that Drayson was casually throwing away. Admiral, it's not that much of a risk, Admiral. Valiablis cut in smoothly and with far more courtesy than Lando had left at his disposal. I've shown you at least eight places we could draw an assault frigate from which would have it out of service less than ten days. Drayson snorted. At the rate he's going, Grand Admiral Thrawn could take three more sectors in ten days. You want to give him a shot at four? Admiral, we're talking a single assault frigate here. Lando said. Not a dozen star cruisers or an orbital battle station. What could Thrawn possibly have up his sleeve where one assault frigate could make or break the attack? What could he do against a heavily defended shipyard with a single rigged freighter? Drayson retorted. Face it, gentlemen. When you go up against someone like Thrawn, all the usual rules get tossed out the lock. He could spin a net out of this so transparent that we'd never even see it until it was too late. He's done it before. Lando grimaced, but it was hardly a frame of mind he could really blame Drayson for. A couple of months back, when he and Han had first been brought to Belobus's hidden military base, he'd been three-quarters convinced himself that the whole thing was some gigantic and convoluted scheme that Thrawn had created for their benefit. It had taken him until after the Katana battle to finally be convinced otherwise, and it had taught him a valuable lesson. Admiral, we all agree that Thrawn is a brilliant tactician. He said, choosing his words carefully. But we can't assume that everything that happens in the galaxy is part of some grand, all-encompassing scheme that he's dreamed up. He got my metal stockpiles and put Nomad City out of commission. Odds are that's all he wanted. Drayson shook his head. I'm afraid odds are isn't good enough, Calrissian. You find me proof that the Empire won't take advantage of a missing assault frigate, and I'll consider loaning you one. Oh, come on, Admiral. And if I were you, Drayson added, starting to gather his data cards together, I'd play down my connection with the whole Nicklon mining project. A lot of us still remember that it was your mole miners Thrawn used in his attack on the Sluis Van shipyards. And it was his knowledge of them that kept that attack from succeeding, Belobus reminded the other quietly. A number of us remember that, too. That assumes Thrawn actually intended to steal the ships. Drayson shot back as he stood up from the table. Personally, I expect he was just as happy to have them put out of commission. Now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have a war to run. He left and Lando let out a quiet side feet. So much for that, he said, pulling his own data cards together. Don't let it worry you, Belobus advised, getting up from his chair and stretching tiredly. It's not you and Nomad City so much as it is me. Drayson was always one of those who considered disagreement with Mon Mothma to be one step down from Imperial collaboration. Obviously, he still does. I thought you and Mon Mothma had patched all that up. Lando said, getting to his feet. Oh, we have. Belda shrugged, circling the table and heading for the door. More or less. She's invited me back into the New Republic. I've accepted her leadership and officially all is well. But old memories fade slowly. His lip twisted slightly. And I have to admit that my departure from the Alliance after Alderaan could have been handled more diplomatically. You up on the President's guest's floor? Yes. You? The same. Come on. I'll walk you up. They left the conference room and headed down the arched hallway toward the Torbalifts. You think he might change his mind? Lando asked. Drayson? Belba shook his head. Not a chance. Unless we can pry Mon Mothma out of the war room and get you a hearing. I think your only chance is to hope Akbar gets back to Coruscant in the next couple of days. The importance of Nomad City aside, I imagine he still owes you a favor or two. Lando thought about that rather awkward scene back when he'd first told Akbar that he was resigning his general's commission. Favors won't mean anything if he agrees that it might be a setup. He said instead. Not after being burned once at Sluis Van. True. 
But it was conceded. He glanced on a cross corridor as they passed, and when he turned forward again, Lando thought he could see a slight frown on his face. All of which is unfortunately complicated by the presence of this Delta Source thing the Empire's got planted here in the palace. Just because Thrawn doesn't have any current plans for Niklon doesn't mean he won't think some up once he finds out what we're going to do. If he finds out. Lando corrected. Delta Source isn't omniscient, you know. On and Leia have managed to run some important missions past it. Proving once again the basic strength of small groups. Still, the sooner you identify this leak and put it out of commission, the better. They passed another hallway, and again the Oblis glanced down it. And this time, there was no doubt about the frown. Trouble? Lando asked quietly. I'm not sure. The Oblis said. Shouldn't there be occasional guards in this part of the palace? Lando looked around. They were rather alone out here. Could they have all been shifted down to the Sarkin reception for the evening? They were here earlier, Bulbas said. I saw at least two when I came down from my suite. Lando looked back along the hallway, an unpleasant sensation starting to crawl along his backbone. So what happened to them? I don't know. Bulbas took a deep breath. I don't suppose you're armed. Lando shook his head. Blaster's up in my room. I didn't think I'd need it here. You probably don't, Bulbas said, the fingertips of his right hand easing beneath his jacket as he looked around. There's probably some simple, perfectly innocuous explanation. Sure. Lando said, pulling out his comm link. Let's call in and find out what it is. He thumbed the device on, and as quickly shut it off as a soft squeal of static erupted from the speaker. I think the explanation just stopped being simple. He said grimly. Suddenly, his hand was itching to have a blaster in it. What now? We find some way to alert palace security. Belda said, looking around. All right, the turbo lifts up ahead won't help us. They only serve the residential areas. But there's a stairway at the far end that leads down to Palace Central. We'll try that way. Sounds good. Lando nodded. Let's swing up to my suite first and pick up my blaster. Good idea. Belbus agreed. We'll pass on the turbo lift. Stairs are over this way. Nice and quiet. The stairs were as deserted as the corridor behind them had been. But as Belbus started out the stairway door... He suddenly held up a warning hand. Moving to his side, Lando looked down onto the floor. Ahead, moving cautiously down the hallway away from them, was a lone figure. A slender woman with red-gold hair, a small blaster grip ready in her hand. Mara Jade. There was a soft whisper of metal on cloth as Bella Bliss drew his blaster. Motioning Lando to follow, he started silently down the hallway after her. They had nearly caught up by the time she reached the far corner. There she paused, poised to look around it. But Bliss leveled his blaster. All right, Jade. He said quietly. Nice and easy. It's all over. For a second, Lando was sure she was going to argue the point. She turned her head halfway, looking back over her shoulders of targeting her opponents. Carizian, she said, and there was no mistaking the relief in her voice, or the underlying tension either. There are Imperials in the palace, dressed as security. I've just seen four of them. Interesting. Belba said, eyeing her closely. Where were you going? I thought it might be a good idea to find out what they were up to, she growled sarcastically. You want to help or not? Bailbus used to look around the corner. I don't see anyone. They've probably already headed down. Best guess is either the war room or the Sarkin reception. And suddenly the whole thing clicked together in Lando's mind. No. He said. They haven't gone down. They've gone up. They're after Leia's twins. Mara swore under her breath. You're right. Thrawn's promised them to that lunatic Sabaoth. That has to be it. You could be right. Bailbus said. Where's your room, Calrissian? Two doors back. Lando told him, nodding over his shoulder. Get your blaster. Belbus ordered, peering again around the corner. You and Jade head down the hallway over there and find the main stairway. See if anyone's up there yet. Maybe try to warn Leia and Solo. I'll go downstairs and scare up some reinforcements. Be careful. They may have left a rear guard on the stairway down, Mara warned. They'll certainly have one on the way up. Belbus countered. Watch yourselves. With one final look around the corner, he eased past and was gone. Wait here. Lando told Mara, starting back toward his room. I'll be right back. Just hurry up, she called after him. Right. He ran to his room, and as he keyed the door open, he threw a quick look back at Mara. She was still standing there, turned halfway around the corner. An intense yet strangely empty expression on the part of her face he could see. That face. That somehow, somewhere familiar face. Fitting into a time and place and background he could almost but not quite make out in his mind's eye. He shook off the thought. Whoever she had been, now is definitely not the time to try and figure it out. Han, Leia, and their children were in deadly danger. And it was up to him and Mara to get them out of it. Turning back to his room, he hurried inside. 
Leia Organa Solo. Leia Organa Solo. Wake up. You're in danger. Wake up. Leia Organa Solo, wake up. With a gasp, Leia snapped out of the dream, the last remnants of that insisting voice echoing through her mind as she came awake. For a handful of dream fog heartbeats, she couldn't remember where she was, and her eyes and Jedi senses flicked tensely around the darkened room as she struggled for recognition. Then the last of the sleep evaporated, and she was back in her suite in the Imperial Palace. Beside her, Han grunted gently in his sleep as he rolled over. Across the room, the twins were huddled together in their crib. In the next room over, Winter was also asleep, no doubt dreaming in the laser-sharp images of her perfect memory. Then outside the suite, she frowned. There was someone at the outer door. No, more than one. Five or six of them, at least, standing grouped around it. She slipped out of bed, hands automatically scooping up her blaster and lightsaber from the floor as she did so. It was probably nothing, most likely simply a group of security guards taking a moment for idle conversation among themselves before continuing on their rounds. Though so, they were breaking several fairly strict rules about on-duty personnel. She would, have to find a diplom she would have to find a diplomatic but firm way of reminding them. Patting silently on the thick carpet, she left the bedroom and headed across the living areas toward the door, working through the Jedi sensory enhancement routine as she walked. If she could hear and identify the guards' voices from inside the suite, she could warn them individually and privately in the morning. She never made it to the door. Halfway across the living area, she stopped, short as her enhanced hearing began to pick up a faint hum coming from ahead of her. She strained her ears, trying to ignore the sudden distraction of her own heartbeat as she listened. The sound was faint, but very distinctive, and she knew she'd heard it somewhere before. And then abruptly, she had it. The hum of an electronic lockbreaker. Someone was trying to break into their suite. And even as she stood there, frozen with shock, the lock clicked open. There was no time to run and nowhere to run to, but the designers of the tower hadn't been blind to this sort of danger. Lifting her blaster, hoping fervently the mechanism still worked, Leia fired two quick shots into the door. The wood was one of the hardest and strongest known in the galaxy, and her shots probably didn't gouge their way more than a quarter of the way through, but it was enough. The embedded sensors had taken note of the attack, even as the sound of the blast thundered in Leia's enhanced hearing, the heavy metal security door slammed down along the wooden door's inside edge. Leia. Han's voice demanded from behind her, sounding distant through the ringing in her ears. Someone's trying to break in, she said, turning and hurrying back to where she stood in the bedroom doorway, blaster ready in his hand. I've got the security door closed in time, but that won't hold them. Not for long, Han agreed, eyeing the door as Leia reached him. Get in the bedroom and call security. I'll see what I can do about slowing them down. All right. Be careful. They're serious about this. The words were barely out of her mouth and the whole room seemed to shake. The intruders, abandoning subtlety, had set to work blowing the outer door to splinters. Yeah, I'd call that serious. Han seconded grimly. Get Winter and 3PO and grab the twins. We got some fast planning to do. The first sound that drifted down the delicate arch of the tower staircase might have been a distant blaster shot. Mara couldn't tell for sure. The next one, a handful of seconds later, left no doubt. Uh-oh. Calrissian muttered. That's trouble. Another shot echoed down the staircase. Sounds like a heavy blaster, Mara said, listening hard. They must not have been able to get the door open quietly. Or else they only want the twins. Calrissian encountered darkly, heaving himself away from the corner they'd paused at. Come on. Hold it, Mara said, grabbing his arm with her free hand as she studied the territory in front of them. The wide arch of the first flight of stairs ended at a presentation landing with an elaborate wrought stone balustrade. Just visible from where they stood were the openings of two narrower stairways that continued upward, double helix fashion, from opposite ends of the landing. The landing would be a good spot for a rear guard, and I don't feel like stopping a blaster bolt. Calrissian muttered something impatient sounding under his breath, but he stayed put. A moment later, he was probably glad he had. You're right. There's someone near the stairway to the left. He murmured. Meaning there'd be one on the right, too, Mara said, her eyes searching the contours and crevices of the balustrade stonework as another blaster shot echoed down. Intelligence operatives like lurking in shadows. And there's one on each side of the main stairway, she added, about two meters out from the edges. I see them, Calrissian said. This isn't going to be easy. He looked back over his shoulder to where the stairway picked up again. Come on, Belly Bliss, get up here. You'd better hurry, Mar seconded, peering cautiously at the four Imperials and trying to remember the details of the tower's layout. Organa Solo's door isn't going to last long. Not nearly as long as that rear guard can hold us off, Calrissian agreed, hissing softly between his teeth. Wait a minute. Stay here. I've got an idea. Where are you going? Mar demanded as he moved away from the corner. Main hangar, Calrissian told her, heading for the stairway behind them. Chewie was down there earlier working on the Falcon. If he's still there, we can go up the outside of the tower and get them out. How? Mara persisted. Those are transparent steel windows up there. You never blast them without killing everyone inside. I won't have to. Calrissian said with a tightly sly smile. Leia's got a lightsaber. Keep those guys busy, okay? He sprinted to the stairway and vanished down it. 
Right, Mara growled after him, turning her attention back to the Imperials up on the stairway. Had they spotted her and Calrissian skulking around down here? Probably. In which case, that guy at the leftmost stairway was probably standing too far out of cover just to bait her. Well, she was willing to oblige. Switching her blaster to her left hand, she braced her wrist against the corner, took careful aim. The shot from the other stairway spattered off the wall above her blaster, scattering hot splinters of stone across her hand. Blast! she snarled, snatching her hand back and brushing the fragments off. So they wanted to play cute, did they? Fine, she could handle cute. Getting a fresh grip on her blaster, she eased back to the corner. It was a sudden tingle of danger in the back of her mind that saved her life. She dropped to one knee, and as she did so, a pair of blaster shots from straight ahead flashed into the stonework where her head had been. Instantly, she threw herself backward to land on her side on the floor, eyes and blaster tracking toward where the shots had come from. There were two of them, moving quietly toward her along the corridor on the opposite side of the stairway. She got out two quick shots as she rolled over onto her stomach, both of them missing, shifting to a two-handed grip, trying to ignore the shots that were beginning to come uncomfortably close. She lined up her blaster on the rightmost of her assailants and fired twice. He jerked and collapsed to the floor, his blaster still firing reflexively and uselessly into the ceiling. A shot sizzled past Mara's ear as she shifted aim toward the second assailant. Another came even closer as his weapon tracked toward her. And abruptly, the air over Mara's head was filled with a blazing storm of blaster fire. The Imperial across the way went down like a stuck banthon lay still. Mara twisted around. A half a dozen security guards were hurrying toward her from the lower staircase, weapons at the ready. Behind them was Bella Bliss. You all right? He called to her. I'm fine, she grunted, rolling further back from the corner. Just in time, the Imperials in the landing, their little surprise attack having fizzled, opened fire in full force. Mara got to her feet, ducking away from the rain of stone ships. Calrissian's gone down to the hangar, she told Bellabliss, raising her voice over the din. Yes, we passed him on the way up. The other nodded as the security guards hurried forward. What happened here? A couple of latecomers to the party, Mara told him, jerking her head back toward the corridor. Probably on the way back up from the comm section. Their friends in the landing tried to keep my attention while they sneaked up on me. Just about worked, too. I'm glad it didn't, Bellabliss said, shifting his attention over her shoulder. Lieutenant? Not going to be easy, sir. The guard commander called over the noise. We've got an E-Web repeating blaster on its way up from the armory. As soon as it gets here, we can cut them right off at that landing. Until then, about all we can do is keep them busy and hope they do something stupid. Bellabliss nodded slowly, his lips compressed into a tight line, a hint of strain around his eyes. It was a look Mara had seen only rarely, and then only on the faces of the best military commanders. The expression of a leader preparing to send men to their deaths. We can't wait, he said. The strain was still there, but his voice was firm. The group upstairs will have Solo's door open well before that. We'll have to take them now. The guard commander took a deep breath. Understood, sir. Right, men, you heard the general. Let's find ourselves some cover and get to it. Mara took a step closer to Bella Bliss. They'll never do it in time, she said quietly. I know that, the other said tightly. But the more we can take out now, the fewer we'll have to deal with when the rest of them come downstairs. His gaze shifted again over her shoulder. When? He added softly. They have hostages. There was one final stutter of heavy blaster fire, a vaguely metallic crash, and then silence. Oh dear. Three Peel moaned from the corner where he was trying to make himself as inconspicuous as possible. I believe the front security door has failed. Glad you're here to tell us these things. Hans said irritably, his eyes roving restlessly around Winter's bedroom. It was so much useless exercise, Leia knew. Everything they could possibly use in their defense had already been moved into position. Winter's bed and memento chest were against the two doors leading out of here, and the wardrobe had been moved near the window and tipped on its side to serve as a makeshift firing barricade. And that was it. Until the intruders broke through one or both of the doors, there was nothing to do but wait. Leia took a deep breath, trying to calm her racing heart. Ever since the first of these kidnapping attempts on Bimasari, she'd been able to think of it as the Imperials gunning for her and her alone. Not an especially pleasant thought, but one that she'd become more or less accustomed to after years of warfare. This time it was different. This time, instead of being after her and her unborn twins, they were after her babies. Babies they could physically take from her arms and hide away where she might never see them again. She squeezed her lightsabers tightly. No, it was not going to happen. She wouldn't let it. There was a vaguely wooden-sounding crash from outside. There goes the couch. Han muttered. Another crash. And the chair. Didn't think they would slow him down any. It was worth a try, Leia said. Yeah. Han snorted under his breath. You know, I've been telling you for months we needed more furniture in this place. Leia smiled tightly and squeezed his hand. 
trust time to try to take the edge off a tense situation. You have not, she told him. You're never here anyway. She looked back at Winter sitting on the floor beneath the transparent steel windows, with one twin cradle in each arm. How are they doing? I think they're waking up, Winter murmured back. Yes, they are, Leia confirmed, giving each baby a quick mental caress with as much reassurance as she could manage. Try to keep them quiet, Han muttered. Our pals out there don't need any help. Leia nodded, feeling a fresh tension squeezing her heart. Both bedrooms, theirs and Winter's, opened out onto the living area of the suite, giving the attackers a 50-50 chance of picking the door their targets were hiding behind. With the kind of weaponry they obviously had, a wrong choice wouldn't lose them more than a few minutes, but a few minutes could easily mean the difference between life and death. A thud of a heavy blaster shot came through the wall from the direction of their room, and for a moment Leia began to breathe again, but only for a moment. A second later, the sound was repeated, this time from the door in front of them. Faced with two doors, the Imperials decided to break down both. She turned to Han to find him looking at her. It'll still slow them down, he reminded her, the words more soothing than the sense behind them. They have to split up their firepower. We've still got some time. Now if we just had something to do with it, Leia said, looking futilely around the room. Years of moving around the galaxy with the Rebellion's supply and procurement section had gotten Winter into the habit of traveling light, and there simply wasn't anything else in here that they could use. Another volley of shots came from outside, followed by a faint splintering sound. The regular wooden bedroom doors would be down soon, leaving only the inner security doors. Leia looked around the room again, desperation starting to cloud her thoughts. The wardrobe, the bed, the memento chest. That was it. Nothing but the security doors, the transparent steel windows, and bare walls. Bare walls. She was suddenly and freshly aware of the lightsaber clutched in her hand. Han, why don't we just get out of here, she said, the first cautious wisp of hope flickering through her. I can cut us through the wall to the next suite over with my lightsaber. We wouldn't have to stop there. We could be halfway down the corridor before they get that door down. Yeah, I already thought of that. Han said tightly. Problem is, they probably thought of it too. Leia swallowed. Yes, the Imperials would certainly be ready for them to try that. How about going down then, she persisted. Or up. Do you think they'd be ready for us to go through the ceiling? You've seen Thrawn in action. Han countered. What do you think? Leia sighed, the brief glint of hope fading. He was right. If the Grand Admiral had planned this attack personally, they might as well open the security door and surrender right now. Everything they could possibly come up with would already have been anticipated in exquisite detail, with Counter's plan for each move. She shook her head sharply. No, she said aloud. He's not infallible. We've outthought him before, and we can do it again. She turned around to look at Winter and the twins, still sleeping under the window. The window? All right, she said slowly. What if we go out the window? He stared at her. Out the window to where? Wherever we can get to, she said. The blasters outside were pounding up the security doors now. Up, down, sideways, I don't care. Han still had that astonished look on his face. Sweetheart, in case you hadn't noticed, those walls are flat stone. Even Chewie couldn't climb it without mountain gear. That's why they won't expect us to go that way, Leia said, glancing out the window again. Maybe I can carve out some hand and footholds with the lightsaber. She stopped, giving the window a second look. It hadn't been a joke of the room's lighting. There was indeed a pair of headlights approaching. Han? He able to look. Uh-oh. He muttered. More company. Great. Could it be a rescue team? Leia suggested hesitantly. Doubt it. Han shook his head, studying the approaching lights. It's only been a few minutes since the shooting started. Wait a minute. Leia looked back. Outside, the headlights had begun to flicker. She watched the pattern, trying unsuccessfully to match it with any code she knew. Captain Solo. Three people spoke up, sounding excited. As you know, I am fluent in over six million forms of communication. It's Chewie. Han cut him off, scrambling to his feet and waving both his hands in front of the window. And this signal appears to be related to one of the codes used by professional sabak players when dealing with... We've got to get rid of this window. Han said, throwing a look back at the door. Leia? Right. Leia dropped her blaster and scrambled to her feet, lightsaber in hand. Cheating by third or fourth parties to the game. Shut up, Goldenrod. Han snapped at 3PO, helping Winter and the twins out from under the window. The lights outside were getting rapidly closer, and now Leia could make out the faint shape of the falcon and the backwash of light from the city lights below. A memory flickered back. The Nagri kidnapping attempt in Bafash had used a fake falcon as a lure, but the Imperials wouldn't have thought to use this a Bach player's code. Would they? It almost didn't matter. She would rather face enemies aboard a ship than sit here waiting for them to walk in on her like this. And well before they got her on board, she had to be able to sense whether it was Chewbacca out there or not. Stepping to the window, she ignited her lightsaber and raised it high. And behind her, with a final explosive crash, the security door blew in. 
The lamp spun around, catching a brief glimpse of the smoke and sparks of two men pushing aside the memento chest and diving to the floor as Han grabbed her arm and yanked her to the floor. A covering volley of blaster fire spattered against the wall and window. She shut down it, her lightsaber, and scooped up her blaster again. At her side, Han was already returning fire, ignoring the danger as he crouched half-protected by the wardrobe. Four more Imperials were at the doorway now, adding their contribution to the rapid splintering of the wardrobe. Leia clenched her teeth, firing back as well as long practice, and the Force would let her, knowing full well how futile it was. The longer this firefight went on, the greater the chance that a stray shot would hit one of her babies. And suddenly, unexpectedly, something touched her mind. A mental pressure, half suggestion, half demand. And when it told her, she took a deep breath. Stop! She shouted over the din. Stop shooting! We surrender! The firing hesitated, then came to a halt. Laying her blaster on top of the shattered wardrobe, she raised her hands as the two Imperials on the floor got cautiously to their feet and started forward, and tried to ignore Han's sudden disbelief. The balustrade near the rightmost stairway erupted in a cloud of chips and stone dust as the concentrated fire of the security guards finally broke through it. The answering fire from the landing caught one of the guards as the balustrade collapsed, sending him flopping backward to lie still. Mara eased an inconspicuous eye around the corner, peering through the debris and the blinding flashes of blaster bolts. Wondering if all the mess they managed to take out the Imperial they were trying for. They had. Through the clearing smoke, she make out the shape of a body, scorched and dust covered. They got one, she reported, turning back to Bella Bliss. Three to go. Plus however many there are upstairs. He reminded her, his face grim. Let's hope the legendary solo luck extends to Leia and the babies and anyone else up there they take hostage. That's the second time you've mentioned hostages, Mara said. Bella shrugged. A hostage screen is their only way out of here. He said. And I'm sure they know it. Their only other option is to go up, and I've already told Calrissian to scramble some fighters to close off the airspace above the palace. With the turbo lift blocked, the stairway is it. Mara stared at him, an icy shiver running abruptly through her. Oh, with all the rush and commotion since this thing had started, she hadn't time to pause and consider all the nuances of the situation. But now, by Oblis's words and her own distant memories had combined into a blinding flash of insight. For a handful of harpies, she stood there, thinking it through, wondering if it were real or a construct of her own imagination. But it held up. Logical, tactically brilliant, with Great Animal Thrawn's fingerprints all over it. It had to be the answer. And it would have worked. Except for a single flaw. Thrawn obviously didn't know she was here, or didn't believe she'd really been the Emperor's hand. I'll be back, she told Bella, stepping around him and hurrying back down the hallway. She rounded a corner into a cross corridor, eyes fitting the card freeze riding up the top of the wall. Somewhere along here would be the subtle marking she was looking for. There it was. She stopped in front of the otherwise ordinary-looking paneling, glancing both ways down the corridor as she did so. Skywalker and Organa Solo might accept her past associations without any qualms, but she doubted anyone else around here would be quite so blasé about it. But the corridor was deserted. Stretching up to the freeze, she slid two fingers into the proper indentations, letting the warmth of her hand soak into the sensors there. And with a faint click, the panel unlocked. She slipped inside, closing the panel behind her, and looked around. Built more or less parallel to the turbo lift shafts, the Emperor's private passageways were by necessity narrow and cramped, but they were well-lit, dust-free, and soundproof, and more importantly, they would take her past the Imperials on the presentation landing. Two minutes and three staircases later, she was at the exit open onto Organo Solo's floor. Taking a couple of deep breaths, preparing herself for combat, she stepped through the panel and onto the hallway. With the battle raging three staircases below, she would have expected to find a secondary rear guard station near their bolt hole. She was right. Two men by the by now familiar if palace security uniforms were crouched against the walls with their backs to her, keeping watch on the far end of the corridor. The noise of the heavy blaster fire coming from the other direction was more than enough to cover her quiet footsteps. And it was likely neither of them had any idea she was even there she shot them down. A quick check to make sure they were out of the fight, and she was heading down the corridor toward Organo Solo's suite. She had reached it, and it was just starting to pick her way across the debris from the shadowed outer door, when the blaster fire from inside it was suddenly punctuated by an explosive crash. She clenched her teeth as the blasters of the defenders opened up, their noise mixed with that of the attackers. Rushing straight in without any attempt of stealth or cover would be a good way to get herself killed. But if she moved in more cautiously, someone in there was likely to be killed before she could get into firing position. Unless... Lay Organa Solo, she called silently, reaching out through the forest as she had earlier when Calrissian had gone for his blaster. No more certain now than she had been then that Organa Solo could even hear her. It's Mara. I'm coming up behind them. Surrender. You hear me? Surrender. 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 And as she reached out her door, she heard Organo Solo shout, barely audible over the blaster fire. Stop! Stop shooting! We surrender! Carefully, Mara eased an eye around the door. There they were, four Imperials standing or kneeling at the blackened edges of the doorway. 
Blaster strained wearily inside, with two more inside starting to get up from prone positions across the ruined security door, none of them giving the slightest bit of attention in her direction. Smiling tightly to herself, Mara leveled her blaster and opened fire. She had two of them down before the others even woke to the fact that she was there. A third fell as he spun around, trying in vain to bring his blaster to bear on her. The fourth was nearly to firing position when a shot from inside this room sent him spinning to the floor. Five seconds later, it was all over. There was one survivor. Barely. We think it's the group's leader. But Elvis told Hans the two of them strode down the corridor toward the medical wing. Tentatively identified as a major hymn Though we won't know for certain until he's conscious again. If then. Han nodded, throwing a quick glance at yet another pair of alert-looking guards as they passed. If nothing else, this little fiasco has sure gone security stirred up. About time, too. Any idea how they got in? That's going to be one of my first questions. Bella said. He's in intensive care. This way. Lando was waiting at the door with one of the medics when Han and Bella arrived. Is everyone okay? Lando asked, eyes looking up and down his friend. I sent Chewie up, but they told me I should stay here with the prisoner. Everyone's fine. Han assured him as Bella stepped past Lando and pulled the medic aside. Chewie was up there before I left, and he's helping Leia and Winter set up in another suite. By the way, thanks for coming up after us. No charge. Lando grunted. Especially since all we got to do was watch. What, you couldn't have held off your little fireworks display for two more minutes? Don't look at me, pal. Han countered. It was Mara's timing, not mine. A shadow seemed to cross Lando's face. Right, Mara. Han frowned at him. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Lando said, shaking his head. There's still something about her that bothers me. Remember back at Card's base on Mirker, just before Thrawn dropped in and we had to go hide in the forest? You said you thought you knew her from somewhere. Han said. It was a comment that had been stuck in the back of his mind all these months, too. You ever figure out where? Not yet. Lando growled. But I'm getting close. I know it. Han looked at Bellobus and the medic, thinking back to what Luke had said a couple of days later on their way off of Mercur, that Mara had told Luke flat out that she wanted to kill him. Wherever you saw her, she seems to be on our side now. Yeah. Lando said darkly. Maybe. Bellobus beckoned them over. We're going to try to wake him up. He said. Come on. They went inside. Joining the ICU bed were half a dozen medics and MD droids, plus three of Akbar's top security officers. At Belbus's nod, one of the medics did something to the treatment wrap around the Imperial's upper arm, and as Han and Lando found places the side of the bed, he coughed suddenly and his eyes put it open. Major Himron? One of the security officers asked. Can you hear me, Major? Yes. The Imperial breathed, blinking a couple of times. His eyes shifted between the people standing around him. And it seemed to Han that he suddenly became more alert. Yes. He repeated stronger this time. Your attack has failed, the officer told him. Your men are all dead, and we're not sure yet whether you're going to live. Himron sighed and closed his eyes, but that alertness was still in his face. Fortunes of war, he said. Belbus leaned forward. How did you get into the palace, Major? Guess it can't hurt now, Himron murmured. His breathing was becoming labored. Back door. Put in same time. Private passage system. Locked from inside. She let us in. Someone let you in? Belba said. Who? Hemrond opened his eyes. Our contact here. Name Jade. Belba threw Han a startled glance. Mara Jade? Yes. Hemrond closed his eyes again, let out a deep breath. Special agent of Empire. Once called Emperor's Hand. He fell silent and seemed to sink a little deeper into the bed. That's all I can permit right now, General Belliblis, the chief medic said. He needs rest, and we need to get him stabilized. In a day or two, perhaps he'll be strong enough to answer more questions. That's all right, one of the security officers said, heading for the door. He's given us enough to start with. Wait a minute, Hong called, starting after him. Where are you going? Where do you think? The officer retorted. I'm going to have Mara Jade put under arrest. On what? The word of an Imperial officer? He has no choice, Solo. Bilba said quietly, laying a hand on Han's shoulder. A precautionary detention is required after an accusation is serious. Don't worry, we'll get it straightened out. We better. Han warned. Imperial agent, my eye. She took out at least three of them up there. 
He broke off with a look on Lando's face. Lando? Slowly, the other focused on him. That's it. He said quietly. That's where I saw her before. She was one of the new dancers at Jabba the Hutt's place on Tatooine when we were setting up your rescue. Han frowned. At Jabba's? Yes. And I'm not sure, but in all that confusion before we left for the Great Pit of Carcoon, I seem to remember hearing her asking Jabba to let her come along on the sail barge. No, not asking. Begging was more like it. Han looked at the unconscious Major Himron, the Emperor's hand, and Luke had said she wanted to kill him. He shook off the thought. I don't care where she was, he said. She still shot those Imperials off our backs up there. Come on, let's go help Leia get the twins settled, and then figure out what's going on around here. Mm -hmm.